So here we have all the tools we need to complete a DIY Eurorack kit. So starting from the top right corner and moving clockwise, we have our soldering iron, solder, multimeter, pliers, driver with a hex nut bit, tweezers, snips and helping hand. Returning to the soldering iron, here we have a decent quality Weller temperature adjustable iron. However, it's not necessary to have uh, adjustable temperature and any iron between about 20 and 40 watts is fine. You want to make sure the iron has a fine tip of around 1 millimeter. This iron has an integrated stand and a cleaning sponge. The sponge is kept damp during the project and used to keep the tip of the iron clean. So using the correct solder will make a huge difference to how easy and enjoyable your DIY electronics experience will be. Without a doubt, you should be using leaded solder. Lead free solder has a, a much higher melting temperature which can lead to damage to solder pads and to components. You want solder with a gauge between 18 and 24 AWG. And if you go to our soldering video, um, there'll be more information on solder, soldering and soldering irons in general. Next up, we have a multimeter. So the two most useful functions of a multimeter are for checking the value of resistors and as a continuity tester. A continuity tester simply detects when there's an electrical connection between two points and makes a beeping sound when there is. If you're just starting off with DIY, there's no need for um, an expensive multimeter, but it would be highly recommended that you get a meter with these two functions. So next up we have pliers and a driver with a hex bit. These are used for securing the hex nuts that hold our panel components in place. Note the tape on the pliers and the rubber top piece on the driver. This is to ensure that the panel is not scraped when securing the hex nuts. And next we have a pair of fine tweezers. These are useful for manipulating the panel components so that they are aligned when adding the front panel just before soldering. Then we have a pair of snips. You will need these to trim the excess legs off components after you have soldered them to the PCB. Finally, we have a crocodile clip on an adjustable arm with a stand. This is known as a helping hands. It's always good practice to use helping hands when soldering to keep things steady. This will make things a lot easier over trying to solder on a desk. So that's all the tools you really need to get building a DIY Eurorack kit. There are of course some more specialized tools and of course there's always more expensive versions of everything you see there. But if you have the basic soldering iron, decent solder, a multimeter and a stand, and of course a few tools for tightening things and snipping, then that's all you really need.